Hi, I'm Claudio Poses, artist for Dungeons and Dragons and The Witcher RPG, and you're listening to Moro's Unofficial Tabletop RPG Talk. This week, Morris and Jessica talk about psionics and other flavors of magic. In the news, Asmodee spinning off from Embracer Group, the Dungeons and Dragons fireside chat, Roll20 and Discord integration, and more, plus a brand new sketch about the tenets of being a rogue. This week on Morse's unofficial tabletop RPG talk. This week's podcast is sponsored by the League for the Rehabilitation of Fantasy Villains. From Lord Soth to Bargle the Infamous, Venga to Verminard, and Vecna to Artemis and Terry. The League promises to rebrand, reform, and relaunch your murderous career into something softer and more suited to the modern world. Hmm. Maybe I should join. I'm more villainous than all of them put together. Which of them made a giant rat colossus, huh? Huh? All the tabletop role-playing news. We aim to amuse and we aim to enthuse. And Morris is unofficial tabletop RPG Hello, 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 and welcome to Morris's unofficial tabletop RPG talk. I am Russ, a.k.a. Morris, or Morris, a.k.a. Russ, and with me this week is... It's me, Jessica from EM Publishing, and you, like me, probably are also missing PJ's amazing intro that I get each week. It's my little hype-up of the week. Uh, but PJ is not with us this week. They are abroad, but they will return. On a, on a boat, I believe, and there's a boat involved. In the process, <laughs> at some point. Probably the big thing goes over the sea, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Jess, I mm-hmm. have a question for you. Okay. It's an important question. Mm-hmm. What are you doing mm-hmm. on the afternoon of Friday, oh. the 31st of May? I see where you're going with this. I was wondering what you were... <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought you were going to invite me to a party on the podcast, so I couldn't say no because it'd be really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to come to my birthday party. I've already said yes to that, though. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. So Friday the thirty first of May, we, you, I, and PJ are planning on doing a live recording of this very podcast, Morris's unofficial mm-hmm. tabletop RPG talk podcast. If you didn't mm-hmm. know the name of it, uh, we're going to be doing that at the UK Games Expo in Birmingham, UK. So yeah. if you were attending, so that'll be Friday at three pm. We haven't got the exact room yet, but it's usually in the pavilion suites, which is just off Hall 2. Yeah, um, we did it so, last year, and that's yeah. where it was. So. so, same sort of place. And it's same time, same place. Uh, but yeah, so we've lit- uh, so we submitted that. It should be on the website soon, and the room will be on there as well. Yeah, yeah if you want to join us. As soon as we know us, the room, we'll, we'll, we'll tell everybody yeah. about that. We'll be recording it live again, so mm. amongst the thousands of people. The first year we did it, they offered us a room with 300 people, and I said, no, 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 I don't think you That's understand. fine. We like, don't need we that. <laughs> no. Do you know what we should have done? We should have gone from an auditorium with 12,000 people, like an arena, and then yeah. the 12 people that turned up would have just sat in the front row there. Exactly. Uh, so this year, it'd be great if we had more than 12 people attend. So if you are there and would like to attend, much appreciate. But yeah, and we'll probably do some live Q&As and we'll talk to you the news of the week and we'll actually try and do a sketch this week, that week as well. So We did a sketch last time. No, we did not. We did half of a sketch last time. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> half is better than none at all. Debatable. But that's what we're doing on uh, in a month, about a month's time. So you have a month notice. So if you are heading to the UK Games Expo in the UK, you can come along and listen to the live recording and join in because uh, mm-hmm. we'll probably need help. We need all the help that we can get. Yes, we need all the moral support is what we need. But anyway, that's our yeah. news. But other companies and places and TTRPG things also have news. There's been a load of industry news things this week. Yeah, it's been a bit of an industry week, hasn't it? It has. So if you're interested in what's going on in the TTRPG sphere, this is a good week for it. So mm. what, what do you want to start with, us? Well, we've got Asmodee or we've got Hasbro. What do you reckon? Should we start with Asma Day and then do Hasbro? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So how about you do Asma Day and I do Hasbro? How about that? Okay, cool. Okay. So uh, pretty much so, uh, Asma Day, as the name we said several times, so they're a big games company. So they publish video games, Star Wars, tabletop RPGs, they own Middle Earth Enterprises, tabletop, you know, they, they do loads of stuff. They obviously, they also publish like really popular board games like Catan, like things like that. So they're a really big company. They are splitting into three separate companies. 
so Asmodea owned by a bigger conglomerate because that's how capitalism works these days mm-hmm. the Embracer Group yep and they own Asmodee and they are separating it into three different places so they have Asmodee which will be just tabletop gaming mm-hmm. and they're going to have one that's going to be called Coffee Stain and Friends which is going to be PC console and mobile gaming which is premium and also free to pet per- free to play so it's the ones yeah. you get to play for free that have lots of microtransactions i'm given to understand that these names aren't necessarily final by the way no but that's what we that's what yeah. they've currently told us yeah yeah and the third one will be middle earth enterprises and friends and that will be including all their lord of the rings games they do dark horse comics tomb raider uh triple a games so all the sort of branded big brand things that'll be happening mm. but yes so that yeah. is the big restructuring and apparently they've secured 900 million in financing for that which people are speculating it's going to be a way to spin off the Embracer group's debts of 700 million because when they acquired Asmodee um, I, this is so far outside my area of expertise so mm-hmm. I, I might be wrong but when they acquired Asmodee it cost them hundreds of millions at the time mm-hmm. basically creating a, a quite a significant debt and it was also at a time in the last year where they've been having a lot of trouble with a lot of stuff Mm. Um, they've um, they've had to close various studios, yeah, like uh, video game studios, um, Saber Interactive, uh, Gearbox Entertainment. They've cancelled games like a new Deus Ex game. So and they've like had like loads and loads of layoffs as well, loads of layoffs. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure how many exactly, but it's uh, it's sort of akin to sort of like Hasbro's layoffs that they had last year. Um. Um, so restructuring yeah, that, began in June 2022 and it had 1,387 yeah. staff laid off, yeah, which is 8% yeah. of the company. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of like the the sort of debt. I mean, I, I, I'm trying to explain this without fully understanding it. Um, the debt, it's, it's like um, a very much corporate thing. So you're restructuring yeah. so that you can take out new funding and financing for separate entities and pay off ones from other ones. And I guess if you restructure them as different legal entities as well, you get different abilities to do things in terms yeah. of taxes. I mean, Asma, and... So the Esmeday spin-off is now 900 million in debt. So, you know, whereas the Embracer Group no longer is. Yeah. So, yeah. So then you can, if you make that a separate legal entity, I don't know if mm. this is the case, but I guess that means if it continues to not do well, you can close that down. And So I think this is all big corporate money business moves yeah that's above yeah. our payroll mm. pay grade yeah um but the, the role-playing aspect of that of course is because uh, most people probably do know them for so like board games and video games but of course one of the things that they own um was fantasy flight games and edge studios yes the so fantasy flight games used to have all of their rbg stuff mm-hmm. which was a lot of the star wars mm. Star Wars stuff and, 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 and more. So Edge Studios now has it um, and has had for the last year or two that the RPG stuff got moved from Fantasy Flight to Edge Studios mm-hmm. and they now produce Star Wars and, well, they've got a load of other stuff as well. Yeah. I, I, offhand, I can't remember what they are. Legend of Five Rings, yeah. Uh, Midnight. Midnight uh, Arkham, Arkham Horror. Horror. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that, that stuff is now going to Asmodee. The stuff that went from Fantasy Flight to Edge is now going to Asmodee. Okay, because that's coming into the tabletop. Yeah. Genre. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's the, yeah. So that's the RPG sort of side of that news. Yeah. So yeah, more things. So to that add. is the thing that is happening. That is the thing that's happening. So there's yeah. been com- corporate restructuring, things moving around, and yep. does that lead us on to talk about Hasbro's? Yeah. Yeah. So you know we like talked like it was like probably like last month maybe or something um we were talking about how 2023 according to icv2 there was a real disappointing year in the hobby channel mm-hmm. and there was a big decline in D. Uh, um only in the hobby channel that was um that yeah. was just like uh, hobby stores mm-hmm. but um there's a recent kind of uh it was the quarterly earnings call for hasbro mm-hmm. they are saying that Total gaming sales. So Hasbro's overall revenue dropped twenty four percent in the first Ooh. quarter of this year, which is quite a quite a quite big, a lot. quite a big drop. But that's partly attributed because um, they divested themselves of the film and TV business last yeah, year. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. So that's that's partly it. A lot of money in that. So yeah, so so the revenues dropped. So I don't I don't think that was anything to be like concerned about or not or mm. unexpected. But it looks like the tabletop gaming stuff is on its way back up again. 
Nice. So overall tabletop gaming was up 5%, which is pretty good. And of course, mm-hmm. overall tabletop gaming includes everything. It's um, Magic the Gathering, Monopoly, everything. Well, they have a separate uh, line for Magic the Gathering, actually. Yeah, so and Magic overall, 4% yeah. specifically. Mm-hmm. I don't know what D&D did specifically. That wasn't called out in the report that I could see. I read through it and I couldn't see it. If it was there, I missed it. Okay. But Wizards of the Coast did show overall a strong growth of 7%. That's good. Which is good, yeah, yeah. Partly Baldur's Gate 3 fed into that, I think. Um, there's a bunch oh, yeah. of new licensing agreements they have mm-hmm. got going with video game studios. Um, yeah, yeah. So there are going to be some more video games coming. don't know what they are. Mm-hmm. And um, they also talked about more exciting innovations from the D&D team as they scale D&D Beyond and expand the richness of tabletop gameplay to digital. So more of them moved to digital. Yeah, yeah. Well, as they've yeah. been saying for a while. But yeah, I know the yeah. d- digital and licensed game sales are up 14%. Mm. So I'm guessing that includes things like Baldur's Gate. Yeah, I'm um, assuming. So I'm assuming. But yeah. We're assuming. Yeah. So. Yeah. But so, yeah. So it looks like Hasbro's doing okay. I mean, not, you know, not doing gangbusters, but it's starting to, to kind of recover from what was maybe not a great year mm-hmm. last year. It's starting to recover. And we just wait and see, I guess, and see what happens with D&D. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what we I mean, do, but it's looking... I mean, like we said before, it looks like Wizards of the Coast is, and D&D is still strong for them as a brand, yeah. as well as Magic yeah. the Gathering. So It's going to be so interesting to see how the new core rules do. Well, speaking about the new core rules, mm-hmm. um, Wizards of the Coast had a little fireside chat, uh, talking mm-hmm. about the re- re- what, Although, what is being referred to as the revised there was, there 2024 was, there was no players fire. Was there not? Were you I there? I watched the video. There was no fire. There's video of it. There's oh, no you've fire. seen the video. Tell me about the video because yeah. I haven't had the chance unless, to watch it Unless yet. the video was like off screen. Maybe you were meant to provide your own. <laughs> provide your own fires. Yes. So the fireside chat is like the... the it's at your fireside. Fire. Yes, your fireside. Okay. It's at your Fair. personal fireside, whatever that may look like. But yeah, no. But interestingly, they've called it the revised 2024 player's handbook, opposed mm. to a new edition or anything like that. But what, what yeah. was in... I mean, the video is linked on EM World, so people can obviously have a look themselves. But you can sit there and watch it. If you're like um, me and you don't want to sit and watch it, what, what, what does it say? Um, there wasn't a load of new stuff. A lot of it was stuff that we already knew. Well, okay. They did confirm that the books are now pretty much near final and almost ready to go to print. So I guess they're just mm-hmm. kind of in the very last sort of proofreading tweaking stage. Stage mm-hmm. that we found ourselves in many times. We know that stage very well. Yep. Yeah. So that, so it sounds like it's pretty much they're the, you know they're pretty much done now. Mm-hmm. At least the player's handbook that is not. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And They mentioned that um, there are going to be psionic subclasses in the book. I think they come from other book. I don't know which ones, but um, things like the soul knife and the psi warrior are going to be in the player's handbook rather than in a in a supplement. Mm-hmm. So they're bringing psionics kind of more into core. Although they kind of do psionics more as just like a flavour of magic, don't they? In, uh, yeah, I was thinking yeah. that. I was like, well, what's that going to be like? Because I know we're yeah. working on psionics with the Voidrunners Codex, and we did some playtests like a year or two ago for that. But mm. So I imagine that'll be quite different, though, because that'll, like you say, just be another flavour of Spellcaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those subclasses are already out there in various books, and they're just things that I'm not personally familiar with, but okay. I, I'm really sure that... like. Loads of people listening to this are going to go. Oh yeah, I know what I know exactly what those subclasses are. Oh, okay. and what they look like. They're just incorporating them in the main core yeah, book, so people yeah. new coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, what else do we have? We had like uh, you know spells that have names. I mean, all the spells have names, but the, yes, the, the, yeah. The I was thinking, are... I was like, uh, yes, yeah, I'm familiar. Spell number four. Do you no, mean um... as names of specific? Per- person yes. like Tasha's, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what okay. I'm um, they're going to have art which depicts their creators. I think it's kind of a cool idea. Nice. And finally, there are going to be some new species in the player's handbook. Oh. We don't know which specifically. Oh, okay. So that's kind of the new information. The rest of it was all kind of stuff we pretty much knew. Nice. Oh, sorry. They, did, they mentioned the internal playtesting did continue after the Anath Arcana stopped. Okay. So it's not like that was the end of playtesting. It, it, it was still going on internally. Oh, of course, yeah. What, yeah. what date is this? Um, sorry, the... Revised 2024 Player's Handbook. Player's Handbook is coming out on... Is it October? September. September the 17th. Well, there we go. Yeah, then well, the we'll... Dungeon Master's Guide is November the 12th, and the Monster Manual is February the 18th, 2025. Nice. Yeah. I have some other news, which is More kind news. of industry, but also just like kind of functional news for users of... Mm-hmm. The world. I don't know. Sorry, I suppose that's really funny. Tabletop role playing. Okay, let's let's just re scratch that. So forget I said that. Okay, let's okay. 
So, I have some news. <laughs> so, <on>. Roll20... <laughs> this is going so well. We're falling apart with RPG. So, Roll20 has announced an integration with Discord, is the summary. Okay. So, they're partnering with Discord so that you can access the tabletop directly through Discord, through the app as an activity. So if you if you use Discord, you'll be familiar with apps that are like activities that you can do different things in, and now they've just integrated that. So you'll be able to access, you know, your Roll20 VTT. So this means you can do your video call on Discord and then have the chat open on the side. And yeah, it just integrates everything. And yeah, so it has all the maps, tokens, layers. It'll have your character sheets integrated with the 3D dice, all the assets that you currently have on your Roll20 accounts if you've paid for, you know, campaigns or assets. It's got the dynamic lighting for those that have the Pro or the Plus accounts on Roll20. And yeah, and the, and the chat will be via Discord, which I think is really good because normally when I when I do play on Roll20, we do tend you to use Discord. Discord for the voice yeah. anyway. So this seems really smart. Okay. But the feature is currently available for Roll20 Pro subscribers. So if you pay for your Roll20 then you get that. Mm. Um, and then at the end of the month, on April 30th, all pro subscribers are going to be invited to a private Discord to like beta test it. Is that voice only or is it video as well? V- video as well. So oh, cool. on the bottom, there's an image on the EM World article. There's a, a little, there'll be a little bar at the bottom with little squares yeah. for images. So yeah, I've never used Discord for voice or video before. Oh, well, there you go. So um, I, don't know, I don't know what it looks like. Oh, well. I always use Zoom for some reason when I'm, when I'm gaming online rather than Discord. I don't know why, just do. Just a preference, isn't it? But yeah, so yeah, they haven't given details about when it's going to be rolled out to other Roll20 users. Mm. Uh, and they haven't said how long beta testing is going to be. But for now, they're beta testing it. And if you're a pro member subscriber, um, then you can, on Roll20, then you can, yeah, check it out and see what it's like. So I imagine at first there'll be some issues and errors because it's beta testing. But mm. I think the concept makes sense. That looks cool. Like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we <laughs> just, now I just want, now I just want integrated with Zoom as well and be sorted. Well, maybe in the future. Let's start. Mm. Let's start with Discord though, because that's uh, yeah, where a lot of people. Yeah, but a lot of because Roll Twenty that. does actually have inbuilt sort of video things, but no one uses it. I think. Yeah, that... it does, but I found it to be a bit unreliable, and I don't know when we've used it. Like the quality has not been great, or someone's internet is. Yeah. yeah, it's it, yeah. the thing is it's doing so many things. It's not doing yeah. that one thing well, so it makes mm. sense to partner with somebody that's doing the thing well. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, did you see on Twitter last week a massive AI fail, D and D related AI fail? I did because you, did you shared see that? it. I saw that the one was that funny. you shared. Yeah. So there's a AI official Twitter bot thing. Mm-hmm called i think it's grok or something like that grok yeah so it's twitter's official thing and what it what it can do is it can summarize news topics oh gosh so when you when you like click on like a hashtag at the top it will like summarize that topic for you what's been going on with it yeah yeah. up above the actual tweets so (laughs) the one of them for D &D, this is what grok the AI bot. And this is where our mm-hmm. jobs are safe for the moment, Jess. We're all right for the okay, moment. Okay, good. <laughs> because this is what Grok came out. After reading Twitter, mm. the AI determined that this was the news last week. Are you ready for this? The new president of Wizards of the Coast has stirred controversy within the Dungeons & Dragons community by announcing several significant changes to the game. I'm going to pause you right there, because we discussed mm. this on last week's one. The previous CEO has is going to be leaving, but they have not announced a new CEO, yeah. is the correct there is no. There is, there is no I just want to no interject new this president. news yeah, with yeah, the actual yeah. news, but carry yeah. on, Russ. Okay, so that's the first bit that's not quite right, because there is not a new CEO. Okay. These include the introduction of a baby dragon for each player, the restriction of playable races to dwarves. <laughs> the return of Thacko. <laughs> the banning of wheelchair accessibility in Dungeons and Evil Lairs. Okay. Additionally, the president has suggested reintroducing racial stereotypes <laughs> for certain races, sparking a heated discussion among players. But this is the best bit right at the end. Okay. The D&D community's reactions are mixed. <laughs> <laughs> with some players excited for this new direction and others criticising the president's approach. Wow. That's a lot. So basically, it's just skimmed all the topics that people talk about in D&D. Mm. 
And so what it's not able to do is separate memes and jokes from news. Yeah, that's what's happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there were some memes and jokes going round of what the new CEO would do. Yeah, yeah. There was okay. a there was like a hashtaggy thing. It was like it was like everyone was going like, "Oh, I'm the new president of Wizards," and then they said what they were changing. All right. And, and some of it was like silly stuff. Some of it was outrageous stuff. Some of it was you know. Yeah, all of that stuff summarized we just heard. Yeah, and Grok thought it was real. Wow. Because AI can't do humour yet. Grok is like a lot of some people's elderly relatives on Facebook then. Yes, so. yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I haven't had that conversation. No, that's that's not real. Please don't <laughs> click that link. Don't click that link. I know, um, but yeah, I, it was quite funny though. I okay. thought it was funny. Well, uh, yeah, so make sure when you're reading your tabletop RPG news to check reputable RPG news sites. Yeah, so try and make sure that you're reading something written by a person, if possible. I have other news though. Go for it. You know, million dollar tabletop RPG Kickstarter clubs. I know of them. Well, someone news joined that list. Uh, Monsters of Drakenheim. Hey! By the Dungeon Dudes. So their Kickstarter mm-hmm. has made a million dollars. It's a 5e monster book. Mm-hmm. It has got D&D Beyond support that we, put, we talked about before. So I'm not overly surprised it's the case, because I think we talked about it before and we thought this is going to do very well. But yeah, mm. it passed the million dollar mark this week. Yep. The campaign ended, oh, yesterday, yes, on yesterday, Thursday, yeah. 25th of March, uh, or Thursday, the 25th of April, for those listening. It ended then. Uh, but yeah, made a million dollars. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so well done to yeah. them. So Dungeon Dudes, mm-hmm. that's their third time they've done that. But it, yeah, but this is the one that it first ever had integration with D&D yeah, support from Wizards yeah. of the Coast. Yeah, so. yeah, first ever Kickstarter ever to do that, yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, it's one that's kind of, it's like they work with Ghostfire Gaming a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, that means there's going to be, because the book itself, it's like 150 odd horror themed eldritch monsters. But there's also all the miniatures and dice and accessories and pins. There's just tons and tons and tons mm-hmm. of stuff you can pick up on this Kickstarter. So, you know, it was it was a really big sort of... I think I, I don't quite know how the arrangement works, but I think Ghostfire handle a lot of the accessory side of it. Maybe. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, yeah. If you did, like we mentioned before, if you want a million dollar Kickstarter, having loads of add-ons and gubbins mm. will get it over the line. Especially that means, the gubbins. That means you make more revenue, but not necessarily more profit because you have to pay for the gubbins. Yes. <laughs> you know, so you, yeah. So... Yeah, yeah. Well, as but long yeah. as you've done your maths right, it should be more. Profit. But maths is so difficult. Right. Well, have we got any more news? I think we kind of like. I think that's most of the main news I had. There is a cool. There's a Kickstarter on for the by Loki Battle Mats though, and I know oh, yeah. you like their yeah. battle mats. Uh, so I do. they've got a calendar of many adventures for 2025. Mm. So it's a it's a calendar, if you will, mm. if you can picture such a thing in your mind. Mm. And each month has a different map on it that you can use with a grid system. But yeah, so it's a little 12 by 12 uh, lay down flat map. Yeah, sounds pretty cool to me. Yeah, it's just quite quite fun. I've got so much Loki battle map stuff. I've yeah, got a whole you can. Shelf of that stuff. They have a VTT th- add-on you can use digitally as well. Mm. So yeah, and I think there you can get tie-in adventures for them and things as well. So yeah. So each month you get an adventure with this, you know, and the map to use it with. So mm. I don't know. Oh, it's quite fun. So, uh, but yeah, and it'll be for 2025. So actually, it could be a nice Christmas present for your RPG buddies if you're looking for something because it will arrive in time for that. Hmm. But yeah, so I just saw yeah. that and thought that was quite. Yeah. Ooh, Goodman Games, they're closing their web forums. Oh. Another one bites the dust. Is that just because it's just expensive to keep running it and. Um, it's old technology. Forums aren't as popular these days and haven't been for like a decade because everyone prefers to use um, social media, I guess. What they said was they've outgrown their forums and the software is incompatible with the direction they're moving into the rest of the site, so they're closing it down. Yeah, basically, it's closing in about a month, oh. four weeks' time, they're closing it down. I do think it's sad when forums close because I do think they... And they do have a space for long-form discussion, which you yeah. can't do as easily on, you know... Or at least it doesn't happen on social media. Yeah, because social media moves so much faster. Yeah. I so think things disappear obviously anything's possible, but it doesn't. I don't tend to see that sort of long form discussion on social media because mm. it just pops up with the latest thing and grabs your attention mm. on that. I also think forums, especially like EN World, that have been around so long, it's kind of like an archive because you can go oh, back yeah. and look at stuff from like twenty years ago on EN World. 
mm. and see conversations and threads that happen then. Yeah. And and technically, you can do that on social media, but it's just not easy to do. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not designed it's to let you thing. do that. It's it's much more about look at what's happening right now. Yeah. So. so keep yeah. keep the EM World forums open, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I do. Th- I do think it's sad. There's more and more forums closed. Though. I remember when Wizard of the Close closed their forums and stuff like that. I mean, they've got the D Beyond forums. They've got forums again now. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think forums are important, and they do have a they do have a place. Mm-hmm. That's surprising that En Worlds would would have that opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> oh, there's a little bit, tiny bit of news here. Critical Role are going to be doing a live stage thing in LA, Los Angeles, in that there America. Oh yeah. In the California part of that there America, and in. Los Angeles in California, in that there, America, they will be performing their Candela Obscura game, the investigative horror thing that they released last year. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, there so you that's go. going to be on May the 25th at the United Theatre on Broadway in Los Angeles. And if you want to go along and watch Critical Role playing Candela Obscura, that's how you can do it. You can go and do that. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think that might be it for the news. Um, yeah, unless you want to talk about the new layout on EN Worlds, because I think that's pretty cool with the image and the slider that you did. I made a few little tweaks on the front page there. Yeah. I thought I'd make it look a little bit, I think it looks a little bit more modern now. I'm it not does. Sure what I haven't had a, a in detail look at it mm. until today, but yeah, I think it, I think it does look pretty jazzy. Yeah, I spent like a couple of days just tweaking that. Um, I basically looked at what, all the sort of big boys do, like I looked at the BBC and Guardian and all the, all the big mm-hmm. websites, and I and looked at basically what, how they do it, mm-hmm. and just like I said, well, you know, I'm sure they've spent a millions lot. and millions and millions researching exactly the best way to do these things. Yes. So um, I'll assume they know what they're doing. Well, yeah, let's hope so. Yeah, I mean, it's not massive changes. It's uh, no, but there's a yeah. nice slider at the top which like summarizes a lot of the news articles. Yeah. And then yeah. they're all below um, that you can click on them and stuff. So Yeah. That's groovy. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I think it, yeah. I think it looks a bit more modern, a bit more like sort of a more modern news site. I would say. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Nice. Um okay. And with that, I think that really is the news. That's the news this week. There wasn't a lot, was there? Today, Young Rogue is your first lesson here at the College of Thiefly Arts and Pottery. Oh, I can't wait. Um, but but may I ask, um, so why does the college have, you know, pottery in its name? Well, it's a cover, you see, to disguise our true nature. But it does also say Thiefly Arts. And pottery. See what I did there? Uh, no, not not really. Um... Never mind, Young Rogue. It is your first day. Now then. Let us begin with the basic tenet of roguing. Ah, good. Right. Got my notebook. Uh, So uh, teach away, good sir. All right. So the basic tenet of roguing is stealth. Right. Stealth. Okay. Right. Yep. And guile. Stealth and guile. And, of course, subterfuge. So stealth, guile and um, subterfuge. Um, isn't that three tenets? Or is it? Um, y- yes. But is it? Well, y- yes, it is. But is it? Um, okay, never mind. Uh, so, uh, you know, please continue. Oh, very well. Now, the basic tenet of roguing... Uh, stealth, guile and subterfuge. <laughs> and deception. Okay, so stealth, guile, subterfuge and uh, deception. And intrigue. Um, so, so just, just how many tenants of roguing are there, sir? Uh, just the one, young rogue. Just the one. Okay, and the one is stealth, guile, subterfuge, deception and intrigue. And artifice. Naturally. So, young rogue, what have you learned so far? Well, sir, um, I've learned that the basic tenant of roguing is stealth, guile, subterfuge, deception, intrigue and artifice. And secrecy. Secrecy, tenant number seven. I beg your pardon? Oh, nothing, sir. Just, uh, you know, making notes. Now, when speaking of the basic tenet of roguing... Being stealth, guile, subterfuge, deception, intrigue, artifice and secrecy... You must never forget trickery. (laughs) Well, I wouldn't dream of forgetting trickery, sir. 
or manipulation. Right. Or discretion. I mean, is that all, sir? Oh, that's all, young rogue. That's the basic tenet of roguing. Stealth, guile, subterfuge, deception, intrigue, artifice, secrecy, trickery, manipulation, and discretion. And treachery. Oh, for life's sake. Ah, plus, of course, chicanery, coercion, wile, espionage, and misdirection. That's 16. 16? Uh, 16 what, young rogue? 16 tenants of roguing, sir. Stealth, guile, subterfuge, deception, intrigue, artifice, secrecy, trickery, manipulation, discretion, treachery, chicanery, coercion, wile, espionage, and misdirection. And subversion. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Do I detect a hint of disgruntlement, young rogue? Well, I'd characterise it more as despair. Look, nobody said these lessons would be easy, young rogue. Roguing is an ancient practice, full of mystery. It takes a lifetime to master it. I can see why. (sighs) Should I continue? Well, if you must. Very well. So, a test. What, young rogue, is the basic tenet of roguing? The basic tenets? Plural. Of roguing are stealth, guile, subterfuge, deception, intrigue, artifice, secrecy, trickery, manipulation, discretion, treachery, chicanery, coercion, while espionage, misdirection, and subversion. And sophistry. Oh, God, right. Yeah, I, I've had it. No more of this ridiculous Theosaurus routine. I, I'm, I'm done with roguing. Oh, if you're sure. Yeah. I, yeah you know what, I'm going to be a fighter instead. Ah, uh, keeping it simple, eh? Well, anything to avoid stealth, guile, subterfuge, deception, intrigue, artifice, secrecy, trickery, manipulation, discretion, treachery, chicanery, coercion, wire, espionage, misdirection, and subversion. And sophistry. <sighs> so what can you tell me about the art of the warrior? Ah, <laughs> very well. So, the basic tenet of fighting is... Wait, do wait. If you're about to begin another long list of pointless words, I'm going to show you the basic tenet of fighting with this here very sharp and pointy sword. Oh, never fear, young one. The basic tenet of fighting is simply footwork. Footwork? Yep, footwork. And nothing else? Nothing else. Just footwork? Just footwork. (sighs) Okay, great. So the basic tenet of fighting is footwork. And timing. Sound of a sword drawing. Ah! (laughs) Malak the Maleficent here. If, like me, you're enjoying this podcast, please consider subscribing on Patreon for exclusive bonus content every week and the warm, fuzzy feeling of knowing you are helping to keep the show going. Subscribe at patreon.com slash morris. There, I said it. Can you stop staring at me like that now? The things I do. All right, all right. Don't forget, patreon.com Slash Morris. Can I go now? Let's have a little chat about psionics. Well, not just psionics, but like flavours of magic. Okay. Like, especially in D&D, I guess. But there are flavours of magic in other games. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, I mean, let's do does, if, does, like... The concept of psionics and magic, to you, mm-hmm. just like the words, the concepts of them, are they two different things to you? Yes. What's the difference in your mind? Um, well, psionics is like a mental ability that you have, so it's something mm. in your mind that you create, Was usually, especially on a 5e thing, magic usually comes from a source of some sort, like yeah. the warlock's your patron, you know, clerics from your god, sorcerer, I guess it's like magic from the weave that's in you know, the world and things. So Mm. I guess that's a key difference for me. But also, psionics also sounds more like a science fiction thing. Yeah, Um, I've always thought that, yeah. So there's like, there's like a medical explanation for the magic. Like they did Mm. it with Mitochlorians in, um, what do you call it? You know, Star Wars, which everybody Uh, really loved. And they ruined the force by doing so. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not contesting whether, uh, let's not touch that on the podcast, but... (laughs) I find with psionics and with things like that, it's more sci-fi and there's like, we know why scientifically people have these abilities. Like in Firefly, they did like medical experiments yeah. um, and things on on beings to make them able to have Do all the powers stuff. that River yeah. uh, did. But yeah, so, so that's the key difference for me. What do you, what do you think? Well, I suppose there's one way of looking at it is that they're basically the same things, whether it's psionics or magic or the force or whatever all it is is basically magic but Mm. with fluff text around it yeah 
I'm just like fitting it into the, the setting. But basically, all it's all you do a supernatural thing mm. and how, how it actually happens. So I guess that's one way of looking at it. But I do agree with you that psionics, to me, always, always says sci-fi. Yeah. And I don't know why, because... There's definitely, like, D&D's definitely had psionics in it before, and sci-fi's definitely had magic in it before, so... Yeah, it just... Yeah, it just feels like that's that's the flavour of it to me, because, like, yeah. if you put magic in a modern-day setting, it becomes its own thing. Like, you have Dresden Files, which is a modern setting, but has magic yeah. in, and it's mm. it always feels different from psionics in that way yeah. to me. Yeah, it's like you know things like Buffy and other other sort of modern day mm. things all had all have magic in them. Yeah, I suppose magic is kind of you think of magic has spells. Yeah, there's always a spell involved. Often, yeah. Whereas, well, in D and D at least. Yeah, in D and D definitely yes. Whereas psionics, it's just a mental effort that you make. Yeah, it's a thing that you can do in the same way that if you're strong, you can pick up a heavy boulder. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose that's kind of slightly, and it's completely mental. Psionics is completely from your head, from your yeah. mind. Whereas magic isn't necessarily, is it? It's kind of like spell components and yeah, saying the right words. And, and, yeah. 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 Or doing a ritual or... See, in a sense, though, that kind of makes me think that magic is actually slightly more scientific than psionics. Because magic it is kind of like... It's like if you say, put these ingredients together, it's like alchemy, I guess. If you take mm. these components and these words and do this, this will happen. Yeah. Is what magic is. It's like so it's baking. kind of more Yeah. Whereas psionics really is just uh, just do it with your head. Yeah. So it's so it is actually kind phys- of in a way. It's more, more like a physical ability. Yeah. Than something yeah. outside yourself. So that's the difference yeah. I kind of have it. Psionics is something you can do. But then, mm. you know, obviously you can have technology that makes people do that. Like maybe you have an augmentation, like you know, if you had to go into like a cyberpunk theme where people are yeah. adding psych you know, technology, integrating it into them to do stuff. Yeah. Which I was talking about someone the other day, and they're like, wouldn't it be cool in the future when we have that? I was like, we have that now. Like, you know, people have, you know, pacemakers on their hearts, and people, like, if you're diabetic, you can get those. Um, oh, yeah, hearing aids things. and glasses. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. 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 So we already have things like that, but yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think, kind of, if you have psionics and, like, magic in the same game, mm-hmm. and D&D's definitely done that before. Yeah. Do you think that kind of works? Because for me, I always kind of think, like, a setting. Feels more cohesive to me if there's just one type of supernatural yeah. thing. Yeah, I think for a setting, I think psionics feel less special and cool in a magic setting. So if you were doing five E, like mm. if you have a psionic a telekinetic ability, it's that seems less exciting mm. when there's a tower of wizards next door because you're like, oh, I can levitate this cup with my mind. And uh, the wizards are like, yeah, okay, so can we? What's that? It's not a big deal. <laughs> Whereas if you're yeah. in a sci-fi setting and you make that like a rare ability that everyone's like, whoa, what's going on? Or, you know, what's Matilda doing over there? Mm. I think, yeah, so I think it can enhance the setting. I don't know if psionics feel, would feel underpowered in a fantasy setting, in like a 5e fantasy mm. setting. I think wizards have a lot more trappings than psionics do like wizards go around with hats and towers and familiars and spell books and cauldrons and all sorts of trappings that are associated mm. with wizards and psionics don't really have any do they i don't think there's nothing that really not that i can think of especially that they yeah yeah i mean like some some games might have like psionic focuses foci like crystals or yeah. stuff but that's kind of about it really yeah so magic's kind of a broader tent, I think, and it's more—it's kind of more flashy and colourful, I guess. Hmm. Was well, that—is that why so, in the Voidrunners Codex you haven't included magic? I guess because one, it's already in the Adventurer's Guide and stuff. Yeah, you don't need but, to include it because yeah. you can just grab it out of the Adventurer's Guide and it's compatible. But you haven't done any like more no, magic things nah, with purposeful choice. No, nah, no. Nah, is nah, that is I that because of a setting? Well, there's no setting in the Voidrunners Codex. Mm. It's, it's a rule book, yeah. so it's certainly up to you what you want your setting to be. So. I didn't really feel the need to put extra, you know, to repeat the magic yeah, yeah, rules when you can just pick up the adventurer's guide and there they are. Mm-hmm. So if you want to have a wizard in your, in your, on the Starship Enterprise, just put a wizard on the Starship Enterprise, it'll work. I will. You won't be able to stop oh, me. Right. <laughs> you can't stop me. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. But you I, do have to, because in D&D with spellcasters, you have like spell slots which represent a more meta way of limiting how much you can do. Mm. So I guess that sort of system would work for psionics, but you'd just flavour it differently because there has to be a limit for how much stuff you can do. 
Like, yeah. you can't constantly just, like, psychic blast someone. I don't know, for example. Yeah. I think if you if you go outside of D&D, magic has a lot more different ways of manifesting itself. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's, like, what was the... What's the Belgaria? The Will and the Word or something. Which kind of felt more psionic-y than me than, than magic. But there's, there's, there's just, like, loads of different different approaches to magic, depending on... Hmm. Or even in D and D, actually, because you've got like Dark Sun had it like its preservers and defilers, mm. and magic you'd get from like drawing energy from the from the earth and and stuff. So even within D and D, there's quite a bit of variation. Yeah, because yeah, it depends what your magic source is as well. So. Yeah, yeah. And in Pathfinder, and then, when they're talking about the new, oh, I've forgotten what they're called. They have those new classes, and they use little. They're not called totems, I don't think. But they have different mm-hmm. focuses that do different things to channel your channel your magic, and they put a different flavor on your spells depending which one yeah. you're using. Yeah. It's like the an- is it the animus class or something like that? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. 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 I mean, there's also other things like, like you look at Ars Magical or something, and it's got this verb noun kind of magic system. Mm-hmm. It's all about the words, and you combine a verb with a noun, and you can do that thing. Yeah, that's very cool. So you can you know you can create fire, or you can alter. Water. Um, water. Whatever, yeah, and stuff like that. So there's lots of different ways, like, just within role-playing games. And if you go outside role-playing games, it's just, like, anything, really, isn't it? It's, like, mm. any anything, like, I don't know, if you go into superheroes and stuff like that, they've got all sorts of different kind of um, it's hard, ways of doing magic. It's hard magic. writing characters that are balanced, though, with magic mm. users and non-magic users. Like, for example, in Warhammer Fantasy, wizards are so much more powerful than everyone else and like they are Mm. rare in the world and it's meant to be that way but if you have someone and i think it was in the dresden role-playing game as well the Mm. the fate one wizards are so much more powerful than everyone else and do so much more stuff it kind of i've had some campaigns people have run for that and they said look you can't play a wizard because (laughs) it's just not fun for everyone else so we're not having wizards in this campaign so, yeah, so I think you have to be careful when you have a magic user or a psionic that mm. that's just not more powerful than everyone else and that's the thing everyone wants to do because you want to let everyone else on the table have a cool thing they can do. Yeah. I suppose kind of like D&D, like generally, different types of magic are just like different schools of magic. So you've got necromancy and you've got stuff like that. But mm. they they all work the same way, don't they? They all yeah, they're all, they're all mechanically yeah. you have a list of spells, you choose some that you, you're able to use and then you have some spell slots and Yeah. And even when you go into like druids and things like that, they you know, they the, the mechanics differ a bit, but not not so much so that you're doing an entirely completely different magic system. Mm, that's true. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. It's like I I always kind of feel like I don't know, I always feel like there should be one type of magic in a in a in a in a, in a setting, in a in a in a world. Because otherwise it feels just like the kitchen is sinky and messy to me. Yeah. I get that. But I also get the approach that you want to have some variety in different things. Because I do like the the flavour in, in 5e that you get magic from different sources. Like the oh, fact yeah, that you get yeah. your magic from as a paladin. Oh, yeah. I meant from, like in, yeah. in, in literature or fiction or something. If I'm watching oh, a okay. film. Like, yeah. In a game, yeah. Because you want people to be able to choose things that they want to yeah, have yeah. fun doing. Yeah. So yeah, it's, di- it's different in a game. But like in a, in a sort of like in Star Wars, it would be weird if you had people using the Force, but you also had people doing D and D style magic, and you also had people doing. It's yeah. like there's the Force, and that's the supernatural magic yeah, that's thing the cool for that. Thing. Yeah, yeah. They have a space so, Yeah, sp- well, yeah, they are basically, aren't they? Yeah, that's a hundred percent what it is. I mean, would you say like the Force is more magic or psionics? feel like whatever i say some part of the internet will be mad at me (laughs) i think it's more magic because of my initial thought that it comes from outside of them the force is something in the universe that they can tap into and use yeah whereas i kind of feel like it's more like psionics because there's no spells or anything they just use their mind yeah, but you have to, like, train on how to use the Force. Like, yeah. you have to go in a swamp and do sit-ups with Yoda on your back. You have to, yeah. There's no other way to learn the Force. Well, from what I've seen... <laughs> it has to be a swamp, it has to be Yoda, it has to be sit-ups, and he has to be on your back. Well, it's Otherwise, the safest no way, because the other <laughs> trainees I've seen have had a much worse time of it. Yeah, yeah, they don't tend to do well. No. Yeah, they will get killed. Yes, yes, rude, that, was, that was the reference. Big. Spoilers yeah, for anyone yeah. who hasn't seen Star Wars, the... Film originally launched in the eighties. Um, 
Yeah. Do you think there's anyone... There are, there are people that haven't seen Star Wars, but do you think yeah. there's anyone that is listening to this podcast that hasn't seen Star Wars? Pro- yes. I met there's one. You reckon? Yeah. Well, if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't seen Star Wars, I really want to know. Yeah. I think that, that might be. Well, if you listen to this podcast, you're definitely into sort of genre stuff. Otherwise, why would you be listening to it? Maybe not sci-fi, though. Or... Maybe sci-fi's not your thing. Yeah, maybe. There's huge, maybe. there's huge genres of TTRPGs, so and maybe you're just into your fantasy. I think, I think people should let us know. If you haven't seen Star Wars, please tell us. If you haven't seen Star Wars, let us know. Maybe they don't want to expose themselves for the ridicule. Well, we don't have to put their names out there. We just want to know. Okay. <laughs> so we won't, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> we don't, we're not, we're not going to give people their phone number and say right, an address. We're not going to dox I was, them on, I on, was the, on, gonna do on the podcast. This is what I was going to do, though. I was going to dox them. So <laughs> That would be a bad thing to do, Jess. No, I wouldn't do that. It's in, it's in the, that's in the bad column. I know. I wouldn't dox someone. So <laughs> when I started this podcast, I had to lock down my online profile to make sure. Sure, I didn't. Make sure people didn't dox you. Yeah, and uh, I'd say to my partner as well, I was like, okay, so this is the thing that happens on site, not, not, you know, sometimes mm. online. Sometimes if women are online talking about games, some people get really, really angry about it. <laughs> yeah. But you've been lucky so far. Yes, I've been lucky. <laughs> lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the odd strange comment at a convention. Well, yes. Which you haven't really had so much recently, have you? Um, wait a minute, well, well, when I was at Aircon, no, I, I mean didn't... apart from the ones that I make, obviously. Yeah, but, no, yeah. uh, no, I think well, because at Aircon I was running games, so mm. I think people didn't ask if I knew what a role playing game was because I was there <laughs> running a game for them. You should have said no. No, um... I, I have no idea what's going on, but like, here's me doing an impression of a ghost. Yes, which is very much my GM style. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Actually, how I'm... does your impression of a ghost go? Uh, well, if you want to find out, I'm actually running a game at the UK Games Expo. I'm running one game from the Level Up box set because I really enjoyed running at the convention. I wanted to do it again. I don't have a mm. lot of time to run lots of games. We do have loads mm. of our convention volunteers running stuff, so there's more stuff going on. But I wanted to do one just because I found it quite fun. Because you like it. I do fun. like it. And yeah, because the rest of the time I'll be on the stand or we'll be doing podcast recordings. And then people will want to talk to me about stuff and things as well. So mm. cause that always happens at conventions, which is fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to UK Games Expo. Me too. Yeah, it's always a nice time. Although I always get so tired. Yeah, it's really tiring because you have to be like around people for a long time and like, <laughs> you know, that's tiring. There was, it was, I think it was last year and I think it was like, it might have been on the Sunday or the Saturday afternoon. I was so tired that I could barely stand up and keep my eyes open. And in the end, I had to sit on the floor behind the counter and Mark was standing in the way to make sure no one could see. And I just had to, I just had to, I was just like, I was gone. I was done. At that point, get back to the hotel and have a nap, I Well, think. yeah, but the walk to the hotel was just like <laughs> 20 minutes. And I can't even do that. I'm so, I'm just that tired. Just lie on the floor, sleeping. I should have just got in that cupboard. We had that, we had that cupboard, didn't we? I should have we just did. Just in there. Yeah. yeah. Shut the door. Yeah. I had a lock yeah. and everything. No, it is. Because you have to be on. It's, it's, it's mentally exhausting. You just have to be on constantly. Yeah. And you can't switch off. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm good for about two hours, and then I start to run out of energy, done. mental energy, and then I need a then I need a break. So, but anyway, that's slightly off the topic of magic and psionics. In um, uh, so that's your psionic ability is being around people, and you have like max two hours you can last on that before you run out of spell slots. Basically, yeah, yeah. or psionic points, yeah, so, uh, or mana, or um, um, uh, 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 mental, oh, I don't know, other things. Other things, yeah. <laughs> like that. Does yeah. it? Do they come back after a short rest, or do you need a long yeah. rest? Yeah, yeah, I need a short rest. It's just a short rest, okay. A short good. rest, yeah, yeah, yeah. There it's not go. so bad. I'll go off and grab lunch or something, I'm usually good. Good, short rest. Hmm. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. I think that's kind of my thoughts. I don't have many more thoughts on science and things. I know I'm excited to see, you know, obviously what we're doing with Voidrunner's Codex and what people think of mm. that. And I'm interested to see the 5e kind of what they put in the player's handbook. Um, yeah. But I'm not sure Psionics was something I'd go for in 5e. Because in 5e, I, I want to be like yeah. a... I want to be something fancy. I want to be a wizard. Or at the moment, I'm playing a fighter and really enjoying it with, with a big sword and all my action surges yeah. and stuff like that. So that's the kind of story I want to tell when I'm using D&D. But if I wanted to play Psionics or something, I think I I do I would want a sci-fi setting. I'd want to do something like a bit Firefly-flavoured where being a Psionic is something really weird and cool. Yeah. I do. I would want it to cost something, though. Like, using your ability is... Yeah. Yeah. 
See, one thing I... If, I don't like it so much when Psionics is just spells. Yeah. Like, you could cast, like, the same spells, mm-hmm. but they're psionic. Yeah, So no. at that point, all you're doing really is changing a word. Yeah. So the, the powers themselves have to be different, and they have to feel different. I, I kind of feel like psionic abilities, even though they can still do a lot of things that spells do, like, a, you know, you need to be able to... Have, your psionic character needs to be able to blast people with lightning or fire and stuff, just like a wizard can, mm-hmm. because you need to be able to do that stuff in the game. Mm-hmm. So even though a lot of the things they'll actually be able to do will overlap an awful lot, mm-hmm. like, they'll probably both be able to levitate through different reasons, because... You know, yeah. So, so, you know, psionics has that, and you know, reading minds and ESP and clever audience and stuff is all quite psionic stuff. I, but wizards can do all that stuff as well. I like some psionic flavored things that are like being creepy with other people's brains, and I will explain what I mean by that because I heard myself say <laughs> it. Um, like things like if you are like a psionic ability, like you could whisper thoughts in somebody's brain, and that's similar to other spells you get in D anD D, where you have like dissonant mm. whispers. But that's out, you know, slightly yeah. different. Or suggestion and stuff like but that. Yeah, different things than like you know, suggest things in their mind, or also just give them a really bad headache because you can kind of pulsate yeah. their brain. I think some of it is kind of like there's some of the like the mental stuff is kind of like memory alteration and stuff like that, which is kind of like yeah, that's it is cool. definitely on it is definitely on topic, but it's also gaslighting in. Well, you'd need to... Real life is a thing. That is like... <laughs> no, yeah, so that would be like... Yeah, that's a consent issue because obviously people wouldn't consent to that. So you would need to check with your table that people are happy for that to happen in the world or that it could happen to their player. Because some people mm. wouldn't want that to happen to their player. And that's... It's fine either way if people do or don't want that, but it just needs... It needs to be said. Yeah. 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 So but, I do think if yeah. you're using psionics, it can can be... But that's almost with any spell. Like, um, I had a, a GM that like asked if it was okay to they're like oh this character uses hold person is that is everybody mm. okay with that as a thing and everyone everyone was yeah. but for some people they'd be like no i don't like that agency being taken from my character and i get around where i don't get to do anything because that's not exciting yeah. to me yeah but yeah i think science kind of lends itself a little more towards that though it does because because magic has a lot of things like it's just utility stuff Fireball. it'll make something appear it'll do that, you know, that or, yeah. or whatever it'll make a house appear or it'll, it'll, it'll like i'm like totally lost any recollection of anything that magic does in D anD D now somehow, but um, That's fine. It, it does it does like weird utility stuff. Whereas psionics generally is mental manipulation, and not always has has quite a sort of focus on the mental stuff. Yeah. Which not is always, but... but I think that's why it leans really well into horror as well, because that mm. could be really creepy. Because also, if you have psionics that the players can play, that means guess what? Monsters mm. and potential Things NPCs can do it too, yeah. will have that as well. And that can be really awful. Like, I don't know if mm. people have seen Jessica Jones or read the comments, but mm. the, I've forgotten what his name is, the character that David Tennant plays. Absolutely. Purple guy. Yeah, yeah. What, Purple man. You know, you know, I'm talking about his abilities as a psionic are scary. absolutely terrifying. Scary, yeah. It's horrendous because it's mm. complete override of somebody's sense of being and, like, consent mm. and awful. And it's incredibly powerful. And I think you look at that as an example of a psionic and why it's really scary. Mm. so i think it leans really well into horror sort of thriller games like that but you know that's the type of game that you need to just check with your players everyone wants wants that yeah yeah but yeah so that's why i think psionics can take and i think that's i find it difficult to create that type of villain in 5e with a like a wizard i'm sure you can Mm. you can do things but that level of creepy terror and destruction of people it's just a feel to it isn't there it's kind of Wizards have a feel to them, and yeah. I don't think there's. I mean, you can like a necromancer does feel different to a yes, like a, a it's got different uh, vibes than a just yeah. standard wizard, yeah, yeah, or a sorcerer, but, yeah. But even so, like a D and D wizard feels like a D and D wizard, whichever flavor of D and D wizard it is, yeah. And you also you also know that the, that wizard can also do all the other stuff as well. It's just that they happen to specialise in that. It's not like a necromancer can't do a magic missile or, um, yes. you know, um, conjure a rabbit out of a hat. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I don't know, like, examples of psionics that always spring to mind. When you, when you say psionics for me, it's always Star Trek, Vulcans, really, um, oh, yeah. and uh, Betazoids, Diana Troy. They, they, they spring to mind. And um, Firefly, like you said, but also Babylon 5. See, mine, I think of Matilda. As in the Roald Dahl book. I can't remember it. 
You know, I think I did read it as a kid, but I can't remember it. The, there's a fil- film about it as well. She's just basically she's got telekinetic. What? Oh no. my gosh! You should watch it. It's really good. There's it's also a musical now. Anyway, uh, it's a little girl who has she's really smart and she has telekinetic abilities. She discovers oh, and she's okay. like, but it's like it's that modern day normal world. But yeah, yeah, and a lot of those things they're, they're even more specialized, aren't they? It's like telekinetic abilities. Yeah, she can move objects but with just, her mind. Just that, yeah, just that one thing. That's yeah, sort of that's thing. what she does. But. Yeah, or this person can control other people's minds, just that, like the David Tennant character in um, whose name we've forgotten. In um, you know what else I think uh, of telekinetic and psionic characters is Carrie from mm-hmm. the horror film Carrie. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Or that's psycho uh, uh, pyrokinetic. She starts a fire, doesn't she? Uh, At the end, it's not just fire. Or is she not? Is it? I can't. I remember. think stuff is on fire by the end. Like a lot oh, okay. happens, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, but you don't tend to get. Like wizards, you tend to get like a lot more kitchen sinky type wizards that can do a whole bunch of different stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think in fiction, at least, people who use psionics do tend to be more focused. Mm, yeah, that's like there's this thing that they do, this really powerful thing. Yeah, yeah, they don't tend to have a great big, huge kitchen sinky suite of abilities. Yeah, I mean, not sometimes they do, I guess, but not not always. Yeah, I think it's sometimes a bit better when they're more niche and specialized as well. Yeah. Um... But I think that works better for literature and TV and film than it does for a game because the player wants to be able to do different stuff. I think in a 5e setting, yes, if you're playing mm. against people who either have other 5e style characters and mm. you are very limited in what you can do, that can feel as not fun because you're like, oh, yeah. I'm useful in this situation, so I'm going to have to wait in the campaign for this. And a good GM will give you that situation, sure, but mm. it depends how niche it is, how often it's going to come up. Yeah, because every time that situation that like... comes up, you're just like, okay, well, Tony over there is going to do his thing, and then uh, we'll just wait till it's done. Okay, cool, the rest of us will do our thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really think that things like Starfinder, where they literally just take a sci-fi thing and just put magic in it, like straight magic, D and D style magic into it, genre mashing. Yeah, yeah. I think for the right story, that could be appropriate. Like, hmm. I'm trying. I can't think of one off the top of my head that I have that I want to to run with, but. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are people like listening and yelling at thing, going like, obviously this. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it has its place in genre mashing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. Yeah. But then, yeah. But you wouldn't then want to go and put Psionics into that same game because I feel that that would feel, then feel weird. At I, least to me, it would. I personally wouldn't in my game, but I bet there's people that have stories that that would work. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. can't think of any, but that's, I yeah. that's a me issue. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, it's, I think yeah. it's a totally personal thing. I think for me, definitely, it would be psionics or magic, but not both. I, I'm the same. I think I'd be the same. It's just flavour-wise, it doesn't work for me. But, you know, different people like different things, Yeah, apparently. I've heard that there are things out, people out there, Jess, you get this, right? There are people out there that like things different to me. Wow. Unbelievable, I know, but that is apparently... The case. It must be terrible for them to be so wrong, you know. I know. How do, how do, they, how do they go about their day? Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, on that note, I think we probably covered that then, haven't we? I think in so, yeah. So Extreme great detail. Well, in a in the rambly way that we do, yes. That's, yes those are our yes. thoughts on psionics. Yes, psionics and magic and things like that and rabbits in hats. And rabbits in hats. We didn't talk enough and about rabbits, rabbits in hats, hats, but we know that they're there and that's... Yeah. The, the real friendship we found along the way. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, should we get out the of here? The real magic and psionics is the friendship <laughs> yeah. we found along the way. Yes. There we go. <laughs> How very twee of you. <laughs> I am. All right, let's go. Let's get out of here. Bye. Right. See you next week. Apparently, I now have to read this to you. This is the official podcast of Morris's unofficial tabletop RPG news, which you can find at enworld.org. You can find show notes at morris.podbean.com or wherever you found the podcast. If you feel like they deserve it, you can support the show on Patreon. In return, you will receive exclusive bonus content. Just go to patreon.com slash morris. If you're interested in his babbling nonsense, you can follow at Morris on the Twitter. Send your emails to morrispodcast at gmail.com. Not all of your emails, just the ones you want us to see. That's it. 
I'm bored now. You can go away. Shoo, off you go. Goodbye. Get out of here. And we should have a PJ with us next week, week, mate. We should have, with luck, yes. Assuming the boat arrives safely. Maybe they've hijacked the boat and they've gone sailing around the world. Let's not speculate. An epic, epic adventure. Well, we'll find out next week on Morris's unofficial tabletop RPG talk show. I guess so. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye. And don't forget, don't forget, May the 31st, UK Games Expo, 3pm, at in a room somewhere you'll, in Birmingham. You'll be able to, we will be. <laughs> you'll be able to register on the UK Games Expo site because there are limited seats because... We didn't want a room with 300 seats when last year 12 people came. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think we're going to run out of seats. <laughs> we're not going to run out of seats. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right. Bye.